Hi everyone, welcome to another tutorial on LZ. In today's video, we'll try to demystify the concept of p-value. Even though we briefly touched on this topic in the previous video on the z-test, uh, which was a continuation of what we looked at in hypothesis testing, uh, the p-value is a statistical staple. You will find it at so many places uh, with a lot of different applications. And it certainly deserves more time and attention on our behalf. So to start off with the first concept, which is uh, what? why is it called p-value? Why is the p-value called p-value? What's the p in the p-value? Well, the p stands for probability. And, uh, and to be more precise, uh, the probability of a sample being more extreme than our sample, which is uh, when you select a sam sample randomly from the distribution, what is the chance that you can draw another sample from the same distribution, which is even more extreme than the sample that you have? Uh, this might sound confusing, but, uh, but let me assure you, it's a very simple concept. And when you look at the visual representation of this, this will be far more clearer. So, uh, so to begin with, uh, let's start off with a slightly different visualization. So let's say we choose a distribution for analysis. It can be any distribution. It doesn't uh, really matter what the distribution is. Uh, and then what you see on the screen right now on, on the uh, left as well as on the right is let's say for that distribution, uh, if you were to take the means of all the samples of a certain size that you can draw from the distribution and uh, the sample size has to be greater than 30, then uh, you will start to see the emergence of a graph that looks like a Gaussian distribution. We know this from uh, the central limit theorem. Uh, if you want a recap, you can... Uh, you can check the video that uh, we did on uh, the central limit theorem earlier on and i'll probably leave a link for that so so what you see is a gaussian or a normal distribution emerge as a result of this and then once you do have a gaussian distribution that emerges out of this uh, one important concept is that if you want to run a hypothesis test you will have to always select a level of significance. So, so what exactly is the level of significance? The level of significance is that value beyond which we start to doubt the fact that our sample that we have is, is actually uh, a representative of the overall distribution. I mean, it is, uh, it is so extreme that we start to start to doubt the starting hypothesis or the null hypothesis as we often call it that we began with right so that's the level of significance it is often uh, denoted by alpha as you can see on the screen right now and uh, to keep it simple we'll begin with a level of significance or an alpha of five percent what we also know uh, from the previous videos as well as uh, from your own experience of uh, dealing with statistics at this level is that the alpha that you select divides the entire distribution of the means into two parts. Uh, one part is the area of rejection and the other part is the area of failed rejection. Uh, so in this case, since we have selected the alpha as 5%, uh, that is represented in the amber color. Uh, on the graph and that amber colored area that you see right now is the area of is basically the area of rejection so basically if you were to select a sample and uh, that sample z score lies in the amber colored area then it is going to be set up for rejection basically your null hypothesis will then be rejected on the other hand if you select a sample randomly and you find that the sample does indeed lie in the area of uh, the failed rejection then then we will stick to the null hypothesis that's the idea basically now with this five percent level of significance what we do get is the critical point what's the critical point the critical point is uh, that value or that point on the z-score uh, which segregates the uh, the distribution of means into two parts which is the area of rejection and the area of failed rejection as you will see on the screen right now that uh, that number is written as 1.64 so in other words for a level of significance or an alpha of 5% uh, 
the z score is 1.64 uh, you would know uh, from the previous videos that uh, the 1.64 you can derive the 1.64 from the z tables uh, if you if you look up uh, 95 percent on the z score table you will reach a value of 1.64 alternatively if you do remember we can also reach the value of 1.64 if you use the inbuilt excel function and use norm.inv we know that the probability we're looking for is 95 percent uh, since this is a representation of a standard normal distribution the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one and that will take us to 1.64 so so that's how we get the value of 1.64 now this representation is true for a one-tailed test but in those cases where you are where your null hypothesis represents some sort of an equality uh, remember that you will end up with a double tailed test in case of a double tailed test your uh, your critical points will be minus 1.6 1.9 minus 1.96 on the left side and 1.96 on the right side well this can also be derived from the norm.inv function or you could also derive it from the z tables so uh, so how does that work well basically what we do is we can uh, we can look up the uh, norm.inv for 97.5 uh, why 97.5 so if you're if you're trying to calculate the critical point on the right side remember that all the area of the curve which lies to the left of it which is 95 percent plus 2.5 percent that is the entire area to the left of the amber colored area on the right correct so basically 97.5 percent of the uh, distribution of the means of the samples lies in this area so if you were to do the norm.inv uh, the norm.inv that you do for let's say 97.5 percent uh, with the with the same logic of a zero as the mean and standard deviation as one will take you to this value which is 1.959964 if you were to round it off uh, you will see it, you will reach 1.96 uh, the same thing is going to be true if you do it for the left hand side so for the left hand side remember this 97.5 is going to get converted to 2.5 percent only so if you run the same calculation with 2.5 percent it will then generate minus 1.96 as the critical point right so so this is just a quick recap of how we generally get to the critical point what do we mean by level of significance or alpha in this case and this will be helpful to us when we start to look at uh, examples of p-value a visualization of p-value to be more precise uh, so so moving on from this uh, uh, to a more formal uh, description of p-value so in a, in a null hypothesis test the p-value is basically the probability of uh, of seeing a sample which is uh, more extreme or at least as extreme as the result that you got from the sample that's the uh, that's the formal definition uh, stated simply if you're running a hypothesis test you select a random sample then basis that random sample you calculate a z-score for that sample uh, and then what we have to see is what is the probability of getting a sample which is even more extreme than our sample put simply it is that area of the uh, of the distribution of means curve that we just looked at that area which lies to the right of our uh, right of our z score of our sample if you're dealing with a if you're dealing with a double tail test then it will be that area of the curve that lies both to the right and to the and to the left of the z scores that you would calculate right so so that's the p value in general but but what does it truly mean so to understand that uh, let's start off with a simple case so let's say you're trying to run a hypothesis test your level of significance that you've chosen is at five percent that's your alpha and and if if that is your alpha uh, you can see we have a replication of the same uh, normal or gaussian distribution of the means of samples on the left hand side uh, the only difference is that in this case instead of using the percentage uh, this has been replaced by decimal point so the five percent that you had for level of significance has been stated as 0 0.05 
uh, consecutively if uh, if five percent is in the amber area we know that the area under the overall normal distribution the standard normal distribution is one so then 95 percent will be the green area uh, stated in decimals it's 0 0.95 we already know that the critical point is 1.64 so so now continuing with with that concept so so let's say you select a sample randomly and once you select a sample randomly let's say you calculate a z-score now it so happens that your z-score turns out to be 1.48 now look at the graph that you have on the right hand side uh, so the graph on the right hand side what you'll see is uh, that entire area of uh, entire area uh, marked to the right of 1.48 uh, has been uh, shaded with a pattern okay so basically uh, this entire area that you have to the right shaded in the pattern is that portion of the curve which is more extreme than our z-score that is more extreme than our z-score and this is what the p-value is so the p-value is going to be nothing but that area of the curve that you see right now shaded with the texture right so this entire area is the p-value p-value for what P value for the sample which generated the z score of 1.48 this is very this is another very important concept that you have to bear in mind remember that for different samples you will end up with different p values right so so now now that we visually kind of understand that this shaded that this area which is shaded with a texture is the p value how do we reach it so to to get that number to get that concrete value what we'll have to first do is remember that the overall the overall area under this standard normal distribution is what it is one so if if we can get the area under the gray colored shaded area and we subtract the area for the gray colored shaded area from one then we'll get the area which is under the textured portion right the textured portion is your p-value so how do we get that so so to get that first of all let's try and calculate the area under the curve for the gray colored section so the area under the curve for the gray colored section you can again obtain remember uh, you could either look up 1.48 on the z score table and then look up the corresponding probability or the uh, that you have on the table alternatively what you can do is you can use the inbuilt function of uh, norm dot test right so if you use norm dot test and your z-score is 1.48 uh, we know that uh, since it's a standard normal table the mean is zero the standard deviation is one and the cumulative is true why true because remember you're trying to calculate the the area the area under the curve uh, you're not trying to look up the probability of a specific point you're trying to find out the probability or the area under that curve right so you use the uh, the fourth parameter is true and when you do it uh, you will see that it's giving you a value of 0 0.93 what does this 0 0.93 mean this 0 0.93 means that 93 percent of the area of the curve is this gray colored area this is this gray colored area so uh, so we have we have solved one part of the problem so this area is 93 percent or 0 0.93 so if this gray colored area is 93 percent what is left over the leftover is roughly seven percent because the overall area is hundred percent right so the the area which is the p-value or the uh, or the area which is shaded as a texture is roughly is roughly seven percent right now we know that we can also write this seven percent as 0 0.7 and we can write this 93 percent in decimals as 0 0.93 okay so now so now if you look at it if you compare the graphs that you have on the left side and the graph that you have on the right side you will see that the area under p value the area that you have under p value which is 0 0.7 is greater than the area that you have for the area of rejection which is 0 0.05 and since the p value is larger than the area of rejection so uh, in fact instead of 0 0.7 this will be 0 0.5 zero seven make a note of that this is seven percent or zero point zero seven you'll see zero point zero seven is greater than zero point zero five so since this area is greater what that does mean for us 
is that the overall probability that you can draw a more extreme sample is actually higher than the is actually higher than the area of rejection so in this case what we see is the p value is we see that the p value is greater than 0.05 in other words there is in other words there is actual probability there is actual probability of getting a sample which does not fall in the area of rejection right remember that your p value is greater than 0.05 so you can you can definitely get a sample which is greater than your area of rejection and since it is greater than your area of rejection uh, we can safely say then in this case we can conclude or we can infer that are that we fail to reject the null hypothesis that we fail to reject the null hypothesis so so this is how the p value is to be visualized if your p value is if your p value is greater than your level of significance then we can see that we will fail to reject the null right because the area that you have under the p value is greater than the area that you have for the rejection okay now let's take a look at a slightly different example in this case again uh, we're looking at a distribution of means the level of significance of the alpha is five percent again it's represented as decimals so 0.05 the area of non-rejection or the area of failed rejection is 0.95 and in this case when you draw a sample uh, let's say the z-score you generate is 1.8 so again what is the what is the meaning of this so so again this 1.8 would mean that this entire textured area that you see the to the right of this 1.8 is the actual p value the area under the curve for the textured area is the actual p value so to derive this what we'll do is first we'll derive the gray area we'll subtract the gray area from uh, 1 and once you do that subtraction you will end up with a p-value so let's try and attempt that first to calculate the area of the curve uh, which is colored in gray so so that again if you do with norm.dist and uh, let's say norm.dist and this value is 1.88 and you start off with zero you start off with one and your fourth parameter is true because you want uh, the cumulative distribution or the area right uh, when you do that, the value you end up is at 0.9699. Rounded off, uh, you will see that this value uh, comes to about this value comes to about 97 percent, right? So, so we can clearly see that 97 percent or 0 0.97 is the gray colored area. And what is the probability or the area which is under the textured area? That that is 3 percent. And that 3% will be 0 0.03. The 0 0.03. Now you can clearly see that your p value is less than the area of rejection. The area of rejection is 0 0.05. So your p value is less than that. Which means if you were to draw a sample, it is highly likely that the sample will fall in the area of rejection. Because your p value, as you can see, is clearly uh, is it's clearly to the right of your critical point in this case we can we can safely infer we can draw that conclusion that we will be able to reject the null we will be able to reject the null okay so <clears throat> let's look at the previous example in this case the p value was higher than your level of significance so what did we find in this case we we saw that we failed to reject the null and in this case, when your p-value was less than your level of significance of 0 0.05, in this case, we saw that we were able to reject the null, okay? And, and this is the basis of that statement that you hear very often. Uh, so the statement that you hear very often about p-value is that when, when p is low, when p is low, in that case, we are able to reject the null. And when p is high we are uh, unable to reject the null in other words we fail to reject the null so so this is the foundation this is the basis behind that statement and this forms the basis for hypothesis testing and a lot of other things which uh, which you might not think is hypothesis testing but behind the scenes turns out to be hypothesis testing
let's take a look at another example which will help clarify one more critical detail about this now remember that in these two examples that we looked at we took the level of significance as five percent what if the level of significance is one percent which means we want a far more stringent far more conservative approach to hypothesis testing what will happen then in that case what you will notice is that your critical point is no longer 1.64 right your critical point for a single tail test in this case is 2.32 again remember that you can very easily derive it using inbuilt excel formulas norm.inv will give you 2.32 right uh, in fact we can test it out if you were to do a norm.inv in this case uh, norm.inv and uh, what is the probability we are testing the probability we are testing is 99 percent and uh, it's a normal standard distribution so your mean is zero and your uh, standard deviation is one and if you do that you will see the value comes out to be 2.32 this is the value that you have here so this is the critical point this is the area of rejection the one in amber uh, represents one percent of the area and the area of non-rejection is 99 percent now let's say you are doing a hypothesis test you took a sample and for that sample you generated your z-score as 1.88 so for the z-score of 1.88 what is the p-value remember the p-value is the probability of generating a sample which is more extreme than your own sample right which is this textured area that you see to the to the right correct this is the p-value so how do we get this how do we get this textured area uh we we find out the area under the gray colored section and then we subtract this area from one one being the total area okay so so let's go ahead and deal with this so to calculate this if you were to do norm dot dist and then uh, the z-score you generated is 1.88 from your sample your mean is zero your standard deviation is one and we want the area so we select the fourth parameter as true and if you generate it you will see that the value that you have is around 97 percent right so, so this gray colored area represents 97%. We can just write it as 0.97 in decimals. So then what is the textured area? The textured area is 1 minus 0 0.97, 3%. 3% can be written as 0 0.03. Okay. So now when you when you compare the graph on the left and to the and the graph on the right, you will see that your p value is far greater than your rejection area, correct? You see your p value is 0 0.03, which is greater than 0 0.01 because of this we can now infer that we failed to reject the null and also remember that the p-value that you're testing against is 0 0.01 it's no longer is it 0 0.05 so remember this is a very important concept the the p-value threshold against which you check if the p-value is low or high will change depending upon the level of significance that you have chosen for your test okay now the same thing would kind of repeat itself if you were to do the same test again the only difference is this time the sample that you selected gave you a z-score of 2.45 so what does this mean so this 2.45 if converted into uh, into into the area using norm.dist so if you select 2.45 your uh, mean is zero standard deviation is one uh, select the parameter as true and you see it gives you 99.28 uh, let me round it off to 0.99 okay and then what is the p-value the p-value is going to be 1 minus 0 0.99 which is 0 0.01 right so as you as you can see in fact if you were to round this off you'll see it will be slightly lesser than 0 0.01 right in, uh, you can just calculate it here as, as you can see in this case it's it's actually 0 0.007 lesser than 0 0.01 which is basically nothing but stating that your p-value is less than your area of rejection in this case we will say that we we will say that we rejected the null okay so again this is just another representation of trying to understand uh, what that basic statement means about p-value okay so moving on to some terminology so in terms of terminology remember uh, we talked about the level of significance often denoted as alpha uh, this level of significance or alpha represents the chance that we are willing to take on our statistical model to be incorrect which is the chance of uh, chance of uh, a sample being very extreme and being rejected on the hypothesis test 
even though it's actually a part of the distribution. So this is also often known as a type 1 error. Uh, we haven't dealt with the different error categories, the type 1 and the type 2 error, and that will form the subject of another video in the future that we'll cover. But for now, understand that your level of significance or alpha represents your type 1 error. Uh, a bit more about p-value, remember that uh, you can select different levels of significance. You can select a level of significance as 5%, 1%, 0.1%. It's an arbitrary choice. But given that you've selected a certain level of significance, your p-value threshold for measuring if your sample is higher or lower than the p-value will change. So if your level of significance is 5%, then you'll start to compare the p-value of your sample against 0.05. If your level of significance is 1%, you will compare it against 0.01 .01 and so on. Uh, usually, uh, some people would state that uh, a threshold of 0 0.05 is statistically significant. Uh, on the other hand, uh, a threshold of 0 0.01, which is a very, very conservative and stringent uh, level of significance, is statistically very high or statistically high significance. Uh, in terms of a memory trick, uh, we've gone over this before, but uh, just to refresh your mind about this, the way that you can remember this is if you're running a hypothesis test, if your P is low, then null must go, meaning null must be rejected. If, you're, if your P is high, null must apply. In other words, if your P is high, then you fail to reject the null. Then you fail to reject the null. That's how you should remember this. Okay, uh, and then finally, uh, I thought it would be instructive to take a look at something else. Now, those of you who have had exposure to statistical testing uh, know that in a lot of cases before we run a test, we first check if a distribution is normal. A very common distribution, uh, a very common test for normality is the Anderson-Darling test. Uh, you will find it very often used in Minitab and other statistical softwares. And the rule that is generally followed in terms of Anderson-Darling normality test is that if the p-value is less than 0.05, then the data is not normal. And if the p-value is greater than 0.05, then the data is normal. Now, this might seem confusing to you at first because didn't we just see that the p-value has to do with the hypothesis test? How did the p-value get embroiled with uh, uh, checking if a distribution is normal or not? Well, here's the catch. Basically, the Anderson-Darling test is a hypothesis test. And it's a hypothesis test whose, whose null hypothesis, whose basically whose null hypothesis is to state that the data is normal. The H0 or the null hypothesis is that the distribution is normal. And the alternate hypothesis or the HA or H1 that depending on what nomenclature you want to follow, the H alternate is that the data distribution is not normal. And, and that is how the p-value gets involved in checking for normality testing. So in this case, if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, you know that if p is low, if p is low, null must go. In other words, we reject the null. What was the null? The null is that the data is normal. So, since we reject the null, we can infer that the data is actually not normal. And that's what leads to these statements. Similarly, if, if, the, if P is high, null must apply. Which means if P is high, uh, null must apply implies what? In this case, as you can see, in this case, since, since the null statement is that your data distribution is normal, so, so then we can conclude that the distribution is actually normal so so that's how you will see p value appear very often in um, in conversation with respect to uh, checking the normality of a data distribution i thought it was important for us to cover that as a part of this topic all right so that brings us to the end of this uh, this video hopefully this will shed some light on uh, demystifying p value and and what it truly means and, uh, and obviously, uh, we will see a lot of p-value usage in future when we look at further concepts, especially any sort of hypothesis test. So that's all that we had for today. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Have a great day. See you next time.